I had been teaching for the last 28 years and uh, I had the opportunity to face problems to different students. This is one thing. And number two, I had the opportunity to learn uh, through different systems. Means I had the opportunity to learn from Senya Ghana, Rampur Senya, then Umdat Khani Ghana, and some vocal styles. You know. So I'm fortunate enough to have the, uh, what do you say, the inner story um, of the music making, uh, the music making techniques of these different schools. You know, in terms of sitar playing, you know, there are basically two schools. There's a playing one is um, taking the path of Itawa style, or they say this just in that kind of Rightly say in that kind of and other is, I mean. Rampur Senia style, I and mean, later developed as Sita style, and most prominent Sita plays up in the Javi Shankar. So, um, uh, I find that uh, the teaching of Sita can be approached from two points of views. One is how you handle this instrument, the technique of uh, handling the instrument, and music making, how to make the music. Right. So, this involves another some more dimensions, for example, your understanding of the instrument and uh, when you go for music making, how to deal it uh, cerebrally and psychologically. I mean, this kind of things, th these are the basic two things, what I feel. So, but the uh, handling of the sitar is concerned this, we go and as I teach, you know, the first thing is uh, to know the uh, inter to have the concept of the gaps between notes that you develop through uh, practicing alankars or paltas. Paltas give you the idea. For uh, practicing of paltas, you get the ideas of the notes in between. What is the difference between sare, saga, sama, or sani, saga? This kind of things. So this is uh, the first thing one learns on the right hand, which is again a, I mean, an interesting subject. And there are different ways of putting your right hand and how to put the stroke. And uh, this kind of things has to be taken care of. So teaching Sita means so technically is left hand and right hand. And uh, how do you maneuver your sita through these two hands? And there are some basic uh, ornaments used, for example, knees and the seat and printer uh, and sparsh. So uh, these are the basic ornaments. And how do you put the shikari? And there are finer salient points how to handle the instrument through the right hand and left hand. This, these parts have to be taken care of first. But while practicing, the important point is that the creativity factor should be taken into account. This is very important, but this, this point is usually forgotten. When it, usually, the usual practice is that we tell our students, okay, practice the, the long supper, for 200 times or 500 times. That is good, I mean, that's it, that is essential, okay. But if, if you don't include some some creativity factor, then your mind get bored. You know, practicing, I call it that practicing is uh, a bad habit other, unless you put some creativity in it. Because your brain get bored, then you don't know uh, what you practice. Actually, practice uh, possibly doesn't make a man perfect, but it gives permanency to the practiced materials. So this, I think, is a very important point to be taken care of, that creativity aspect should be taken care of. For example, if somebody plays Padanisare Gama Padanisare Gare Sanitha Pama Gare Sanitha, this cycle, then maybe he puts an accent somewhere, change accents and this kind of things, or maybe he double the most Padanisare Gama Padanisare Gare Sanitha Pama Gare Sanitha Padanisare Gama etc. So then his brain I mean, remains a lot, and then he can see that when he is faltering and when he is going well. 
So this is the point. And uh, this is, a, I mean, very uh, I mean, common query that what should one practice? The simple answer is that one should practice the things that he can't play or that he can't play properly. The second question is that how long one should practice? The simple answer is till it comes. But there are sub points, you know, that one should shouldn't injure his muscles and nerves, etc. So one should be careful. Uh, one should reach up to the pain level. I mean, you know, this, uh, physiologically. Reaching the pain level, then you should stop, drop the practice. This is one point. And uh, practicing means uh, to have some mastery of the instrument. To have some mastery of the instrument, you have to take uh, all the different techniques that is involved in sitar playing. For example, sapad, gamma, chala, whatever. There are so many. So that can be taken individually. This is one aspect that helps you to master the instrument to some extent. But I mean most important I feel this most importantly the creativity has aspect has to be given appropriate weightage. I mean we mostly forget to give appropriate weightage to creativity fact. So Um, for that, you know, if we go to, to I mean, delusion or ragas, then we have to understand, you know, my concept is that when you play raga, it should bring out some kind of a mood. That is very important. It is not that I don't believe that Narek, Nirega Mandhanisa, Sanita Pamagarisa makes you say, Nirega Mandhanisa, Sanita Pamagarisa. This is not human. So there is a there na there 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 na there so nirega ma pa what are the intonation so this kind of things should be taught to the students and uh, the mood should be given appropriate importance and. Uh, we shouldn't only tell them that, okay, this is the ascending, this is the descending, okay, fine, this is okay, but above that, above everything, uh, the students should be, uh, well, the students should understand that the mood, and they should be able to, um, the mood is a very important factor. So, uh, this is one thing, and second thing is, uh, how do you, I mean, they should be also taught the traditional system of improvisation, traditional system of progressing with the raga. For example, we call it silsila. Silsila means you start with alap. How do you go with alap? There are how many types of alaps are there? There are so many types. You know, at least four types of alaps are there. So how do you go, go, go with the note progression in its style? Then how you play the second, third, fourth phases of alap, namely jor section. There are several sections in Jor. How do you go with, go with that? Then how do you play Jhala with Allah? Then this is the one major part. And while playing Allah, what are the importance of notes? How do you hit the note? And what a student should look for? This, I think, is a very important factor and how to go with the improvisation. I mean, supposing you take Yaman and uh, take, say, four notes, Dha, Ture, Dhani, Sade, then how to improvise through that? And uh, what are the different dimensions? I mean, uh, you know, how do you use the pitch factor? How do you use the intensity factor? How do you use the timing factor, speed factor? And how do you use the, uh, what do you say, tonal factor? So these are the basic four elements that can be used during improvisation. So, uh, and above all, the mood of the raga, the basic mood of the raga should be intact. So, uh, this is, these are the areas the students should know. And the silsila, you know, for you first go to the mandra, then mandra, then tar, then, I mean, this the, there are four, I mean, 
most of us know, I mean the Indian students know, at least hear of the four angles, four tuks, Sthai, Yantra, Sanchari, Abha. But, uh, I mean, how this can be played is not very clear to all. So, how do you go with Sthai, sorry, Sthai, to how do you go with Antra, how do you go with Sanchari and Abha. These things, you know, these are traditional things, this should be learned and understood very nicely. This is uh, how do you play the mohra, the ending of each phrase is. Then you go to the jor section where you have the bit jor, mat jor, damat jor, etc. Then how the silsila should go, how the position should go, how you gradually increase the speed, how you introduce different alankars, how do you gradually go to, from me to gamak. This kind of things should be understood nicely. Then you go to the tam sector. Then there, there can be many types of tams, basically bol tam and uh, ekhara tam. So these areas again has to be understood nicely, separately, with appropriate details. Then again you come to jala section, there are many possibilities with jala. There, there, there are many techniques for playing jala. Ular chala, silver chala, then use a bit of tarat, you know, different you know, styles. So, in short, you know, these are the areas uh, one should la learn. Then we go to the Vilambit Gath. The Vilambit Gath, while reaching the Vilambit Gath, number one consideration is the speed. And also, another consideration should be the what is the matching speed for the, for the theme. In this case, there are. And when you take Bahar, what should be the speed? When you take, say, for example, the Barikhana, what should be the speed? Then, which Tal you choose? It, I mean, generally chosen Tal is Tien Tal, but there are other Tals. Then, then, when you choose Tal, what is the reason? Why you choose Chap Tal, for example? Why you choose Yupak Tal? So there should be some reasons of choosing Tal, choosing a, a specific speed. Not only that, we have to play a two-hour concert, so we, we have to <laughs> play this much of music, so we, we, we take some Tal or something. That shouldn't be the logic. The basic, uh, the, the primary intention should be the creation of some kind of art. So uh, the art should say something. And there should be some kind of uh, artistic logic in it. I, mean, I, I say it, you call it artistic logic. Then uh, you, you take Vilam Bhikkhat, you choose the Tal, the appropriate Tal. Then, then again, the, the, the Silsila comes that how you go, you go with that. You start with the Bart. Bart means, you know, playing the Gat with different intonations, different shapes and all. Or you, you start with, for example, 16, 16 10 Tanas, very fast Tanas. Or, or you, there can be so many types of tanas, and sitar is so much developed technically. You know, there are many options. You know, while playing tanas, you can also play some shikari and all. You can put some gaps. You can use intensive right hand. You can use more of left hand, less of right hand, combination of left and right and all. So there are many, many, many possibilities for playing you know, to choose a playing technique of a tan. So what tan do you take first? Why? Anyway, I mean, the silsila has to be decided and decided as per the artistic requirement. There are some sets, I mean, for the gut sector, I don't think I have talked with many musicians and musicologists, and uh, I failed to discover any set silsila for gut part, uh, traditional silsila for gut part. So, for the ala, it's there. <coughs> they say that uh, that's 12 part Allah or 7 part Allah or 13 part Allah or 4 part Allah. So uh, there is some kind of silsila for Allah. I mean, quite strong laid down silsila for Allah. But for the God section, I doubt if there is a, a, a traditional uh, this thing, silsila. But, uh, but the musicians maintain a silsila. It's there. I mean, if you take any I mean, real good musician, you'll find that. There is a silsila, but that can be changed according to the artistic requirement. 
So we have to uh, take into consideration what do you want, why do you want that. Then take the silsila for Vilamitya. Then what next? Should you stop it here? End with the Vilamitya. I mean, going back, you know, the first thing I, I started with Vilamitya, but then maybe Madhalaya, then maybe Dhrudga. It depends on all, I mean, the artistic demands, the aesthetic demands. So if uh, it may be possible that after a detailed dialogue you take, or some, someone takes Madhalaya and ends the performance, and in the next piece he takes, uh, or one takes Dhrudga uh, or Vilamitya. So it depends on the position. But uh, for playing the rag, uh, sorry, for, for, for playing the gut part, uh, the silsila is a very important point. Then uh, going to the Mathalaya gut, again, there are many, many thoughts to choose from. Then again, the same question that why should I take this thala? And if I take this thala, then what should be a befitting la? And if the composition that I am playing, uh, has a right connection, I mean, I mean is it befitting with the, with the line? I mean, is, it is Bhakta Vilabhita towards slower, slower part, then the ornamentation, ornamentation in the composition should be more, if it is towards the faster um, zone, then the ornamentation will be less. This is, I mean, I mean, the general rule, you know, if you go slower, then you, you use more ornamentation in terms of bead, in terms of Krintasams and whatever. So, this is what. 